In this video, we will take a look at how to calculate the time complexity and thereby big O notation of the binary search program. So the program we have written in the previous video, I have rewritten here. So now let us assume that the array which we take is an input is going to have n elements. So to do the time complexity analysis, we need to determine the worst case time. So this worst case is going to depend on the size of the array, that is the number of elements in the array. So what would be the worst case in a binary search algorithm? The worst case would be is that we keep dividing the array in half and try to search for the element and finally we come to a point where we only have one element in our range of search and then we realize that even that one element which is in our range is not equal to the element we are searching for and we say that the element is not found. So this is how the worst case of a binary search would run. So let's try to find the time it takes. So the time taken in the worst case is going to be a function of the input size. We want to find t of n. So when we have n elements in the array, we are going to go through all the checks and finally we are going to arrive at a recursive call. Why do we not arrive at a definite answer? This is because we are trying to analyze the worst case. So of course we will not enter the if statement which says that the element has been found. Note that this is going to be the first time we enter the function. This is when we have all the elements of the array which we are trying to search in. So right away we cannot say that the element is not found because there is more than one element in this case. So that is why we don't go to either of the base cases and we have to go to one of the recursion calls. So what does this mean? We mean that we have to check a few things and then after that we end up at a recursive call. So the time taken by the algorithm to search through n elements is equal to the time taken for the checks and the time taken for the recursive call. Now the checks are going to take some constant time. It does not depend on the size of the array. So let's say that the checks are going to take some constant time c. Now all we have to do is find out the time taken by the recursive call. So when I have return bin underscore search with the parameters, I want to find the time of this statement. How long does this statement take? So when I call the function, I, the function will start executing and only when the function has stopped executing will this statement be done executing. So the time taken by this statement is equal to the time taken by the function which has been called. So let's see what is the time taken by the function that has been called. We are calling the binary search function. So we want to know the time of the binary search function for how many elements. Over here we are only going to search half of the array. So we are going to do the binary search for n by 2 elements. If t of n is the time taken by a binary search for n elements, t of n by 2 will be the time taken by the binary search for n by 2 elements. So t of n is equal to c, the time taken for the checks, plus t of n by 2 the time taken by the function call when we are performing binary search on half of the elements. Let's call this formula number 1. Now this formula holds for all n including n by 2. So using the rule set in formula 1 we can say that t of n by 2 is equal to c plus t of n by 4. In this case we have said n is n by 2 and n by 2 divided by 2 is n by 4. Let's call this formula number 2. 
So now we can substitute 2 in 1. When we substitute 2 in 1, what do we arrive at? We say t of n is equal to t of n by 4 plus 2 into c. Let's call this formula number 3. Now once again we have t of n by 4. We can expand this using the rule set in 1. t of n by 4 is equal to c plus t of n by 8. Let's call this formula number 4. Now, once again, we can substitute. Let us substitute 4 in 3. So, we arrive at t of n equal to t of n by 8 plus 3c. Let's call this formula number 5. As you can see, we can go on doing this. We can arrive at t of n by 16 plus 4c, which is going to be equal to t of n by 32 plus 5c. So there, there's a sort of pattern which is forming. So let's see what is the pattern we can identify. So the pattern identified is t of n is equal to t of n divided by 2 to the power of some integer i plus i into c. Let's check if this pattern holds. In equation number 1, we have t of n divided by 2 to the power of 1 plus 1c. In equation number 3, we have t of n divided by 2 to the power of 2 plus 2c. In equation number 5, we have t of n divided by 2 to the power of 3 plus 3c. This can keep going on and each time this condition will hold. Now as you can see, this term, the t of n divided by 2i, this is a diminishing term. In the beginning, we say it's n by 2, then it becomes n by 4, and then it becomes n by 8, soon it will be n by 16. So what does this mean? First we have to find, to find the time taken to search for all elements in the array, we have to find the time taken to search for half of the elements of the array. Then we have to find the time taken for one fourth elements, then one eighth elements, and so on. So when does this stop? If you remember, in our binary search algorithm, we said that the problem size can go on reducing until we reach only one element in the array. When we reach only one element in the array, then we must check whether that is the element we are searching for. If even the last element we are, which is in our range is not the element we are searching for, then we say that the element has not been found and we return minus 1. So, at some point, as n by 2 to the power of i is diminishing, we are going to reach only one element in our array. So, at some point, As n by 2i diminishes, we reach only one element in our array. So, in other words, this means that at some point, as this diminishes, t of n by 2i is going to equal to t of 1. So with this in mind, let's look at the next step. So what have we said? We have said that t of n is equal to t of n divided by 2 power i plus i into c. We have also said that at some point, t of n divided by 2 power i is equal to t of 1. This implies that n divided by 2 to the power of i is equal to 1. Cross multiplying and bringing 2 to the power of i up, we have n is equal to 2 to the power of i. Now, we want to find the value of i. So, let's take log on both sides. So, take log to the base 2 on both sides. 
Doing this, we get log to the base 2n is equal to log to the base 2, 2 to the power of i. So, simplifying this further, whenever we have log to the base 2, 2 to the power of any x, that is equal to x itself. So, log to the base 2, 2 to the power of i is going to equal to i. So, now we have found out the value for i. So, if we call this equation number 6 and we call this equation number 7, we can substitute 7 in 6. So, substituting 7 in 6, we get t of n is equal to t of n divided by 2 to the power of log to the base 2 n plus log to the base 2 n into c. So, c log to the base 2 n. Now, this term log uh, 2 to the power of log base 2 n is equal to n. So, t n divided by n plus c log to the base 2 n. The n will cancel and we will arrive at 1. So, finally, what can we say? We say that t of n is equal to t of 1 plus c into log to the base 2 into n. So, now we want to know what t of 1 is. t of 1 is the time taken by the binary search algorithm when there is only one element in the range of search. So, in such a case, the algorithm is not going to go into a recursive call. Since it's the worst case, it won't find the element at the middle or at the last element which is present and then it will check if it's one element and that's true and then it will conclusively say that it has not been found in the array. So, this t of 1 does not depend on any other recursive call. It follows a definite set of steps and it returns some value. So, the time taken by a binary search algorithm when there is only one element left in the array does not depend on the input, it does not depend on any other recursion call or the input size. It's going to take some constant time. Let's say that this constant time is going to be k. So, we get t of n is equal to c into log 2 n. Now, we have arrived at the equation for the time in the worst case of binary search. Now that we have this, let's go about finding the big O of this function. The big O merely states the growth of the algorithm. So, to find the big O, firstly, we must ignore all constants. And secondly, we have to pick that term which is part of the function which will most affect the growth of the function with respect to the input size. So, this is the worst case time. Let me rewrite that. Now, let me remove all the constants. k is a constant, the constant time in which binary search executes for only one element. c is also a constant, the constant time taken for the checks to be done in each case. What are we left with? We are left with log to the base 2n. This is going to be the most dominant term which is going to affect the growth of t of n. So, what can we say? We can say that t of n is order of log to the base 2n. Or, we can say that binary search is order of log to the base 2n. This is how we determine the big O of the binary search algorithm.